welcome to my channel. Today, we're unboxing Oath from Leader Games. I'm really, er, Oath Chronicles of Empire and Exile. I'm really excited for this. Um, we have all of Root over there, and my twin brother and I like to play two-player games a lot, though this doesn't exactly fit into there. We love Kyle Farron, and we love Cole Worley games. This is really exciting, and we're super excited to get into it, especially since we were really enjoying campaign games and stuff. And we're not going to play this as often as something as Root, but this seems really cool with all the people coming around. And I really like the title, how it's just right in the middle, and it's leading you to look into the distance, not just at anything in particular. I think this is a really unique game, which I want to see more about and can't wait to play. As the Chancellor, perhaps. Ooh. This seems really cool. All the cards and the different art and stuff. In Oath, one to six players will guide the... Hmm, I don't care about that. I get bored about that when I'm in an unboxing video, so we'll just open this. One to six players, 10 plus, and 45 to 150 minutes. Not very easy to predict, especially in Oath. It's a legacy light campaign game. It can surprisingly end between like three to six turns by whoever's leading rolling a dice, and if they land on a particular number, which gets easier and easier, then they have a chance to win. So it's hard to predict, and this has been called like king making the game, but I still don't care, it seems really cool. There. Ooh, this is so pretty, I'm so excited. And now, the best part. Very satisfying and very crisp at the end. We do love a good box art here. Oath Playbook, Oath Chronicles of Empire and Exile, typical leader games, lots of booklets. Read Me First. I think this is the walkthrough guide they usually have. Yeah, where they explain what it is. And then, ooh, that's cool, explaining exiles. An exile can become the Oath Keeper, but they must become the Usurper to win, or they can become a Visionary. And the Chancellor begins as Oath Keeper of Supremacy, who rules three sites, and can only win on rounds five through eight by holding the Oath. Keeping the Oath. And the actions, like all the illustrations and stuff, Kyle Farron is just great. And then the contents, the Law of Oath, just like Root, October 2020. Huh. I didn't think it was out in 2020, though. I think it's not last year, I'm not sure. A chronicle summary. Oh, are these references? Ooh, and the clockwork prints. This is the solo or two-player mode you can have, and then you like have a token and move it around to determine what the person does. Seems a little complicated, but hopefully you can figure it out. And then we have a clockwork prints reference guide. Very detailed, but it seems easy enough to look at. Then oath character reference. Oh, so this is looking at the different cards and stuff. The game is very card driven. You're going to be doing different actions, interacting with them on the board to find out different things and then playing them to different sites or into your specific tableau. It seems super cool. And then the different suits. Yeah, there's like different like houses or great powers in the land. There's Discord, Hearth, the Beast, Arcane, Order, and Nomad. I like Arcane. I played one of these. I played this once before at a local game store when it first came out but just getting it now for my birthday. Ooh, and here, this is unfortunately the retail version because the Kickstarter one is much more expensive, although we can buy it if we decide we like that. Here, let's see. Very clean, no frills for the Imperial Reliquary. This will be something for the Chancellor. Let's see about the other tokens. Yeah, very easy, no clips, no anything. And then these are the cardboard tokens you can use to keep track of secrets, um, which are like a different form of currency, which you can use to like become the holder of the darkest secret or gain power over others or like burn them for stuff. It's crazy. Which have like a thick car, uh, wooden thing and then metal coins in the case starter, but alas, we'll settle for these. I love the chicken. I love the chicken on the, you can see it there. It's very cute. I like chickens. And then there's the first punch board. And then over here, oh, card dividers, which you have for inside the game box. Nomad. And then there's one for each house. Where's Arcane? 
Oh, there's our cane. Baking a magical pie. That's cool. Ooh, an evil person baking a magical pie. She seems very malicious in that pie making. She's glaring at her pie or something. I don't know. And she's gonna get poison someone. Maybe it's just a normal pie. And she's just got taking a picture of her at the wrong time. Kyle Fan's awesome. This is the first time with the people like real and I, I think it's really cool like all the unique colors and stuff and then of course the evil pig which is one which is a relic in the game you can have I don't remember exactly what it does but then you can use it to like attack people and stuff I don't remember specifically and then tokens for the different houses and then each of these are the oaths that you can have that for you to win at the beginning of the game you'll choose one like holding the darkest secret or holding the being the most popular or something and then the person who plays, so everyone's either a chancellor and exiled. The chancellor has to keep the oath, and then the exiles can either they win if the chancellor wins and they meet the specific successor goal, or if they meet their own individual goal. Punch board sheet two. And then, yeah, here they are. Ooh, this is cardboard. I didn't realize that. Thought it was just gonna be like Marvel United. Ooh, that's a that, that's the copper prince. Here's the chancellor's board. And you're gonna have like your supply on this track down here, and you're gonna be spinning it to do different actions on your turn. And then there's a reference over here of what all the actions do. And then here's the solo and two player vault for the chancellor. And then we have each of the different textiles. We're basically the same, but with different colors. All right, there's black, white, red, blue. And yellow. I would definitely play as blue. That is really cool, that Cyclops looking thing. So let's take you guys and put you to the side. And then of course, the most amazing part of both, in every version, even this measly retail version, instead of being deemed to have a regular board, instead we get Playmat in every single version. Oh, it's really big too. Ooh. So this is where the like capital is over here off camera, and then the like sub suburbs, and then the further outland. I like how each is a different color. Over here you have the green into the blue, into the red, which helps distinguish it. You're going to have cards with locations going out on each of these. And then these are where you have the coins for the different houses or like powers. And then you're going to draw cards from here and then discard them to different areas. It's really cool. There's not a ton going on in the game. There's there's a lot going on in the game, but it's, it's very story driven, which I really like. I actually don't even have a playmat for any of my other games. I've just seen them before. So this is exciting. No, let's roll you up like that. I have to make sure we can still see everything else. And put you back in the box. All right, hold on one sec. Put you guys up. Over there. And then back here. Yeah, so we have to fit that back in. Ooh, it's gonna be a bit hard. It's very pretty. There we go. Um, and then over here, oh, here's the giant baggie of stuff inside of it. It's quack a local trademark. There's each of the different colored pieces. Let's see what these are. Let's stick you back over there. Yellow, black, and blue, white, and the chancellors. They're all screen printed, high quality needles, as reader games does. And then each of the exiles and each person has one big dude to represent like themselves or their pawn i believe it's called and then these small armies for each color it's the same in each one i'm not gonna open all of them right now i have to get bags for each of them is there a storage system in here it does not look like it oh no oh yes here we go bag of bags thank you so much love this season you don't have to get your own bags or use ziplocs or something so here I will show all of them after when I show a setup for the game at the end, which you can stick around to see. I'll show a setup version for two since my brother and I can't wait to play this. So there's blue, and then you can see what purple looks like. The chancellor. Wee! Wee! I'll 
to get that later. Ooh, I really like this purple and bold. Purple is my favorite color, or blue, and probably purple though, it's very pretty. And there's the Chancellor's Pawn, taller than the others, and then the Chancellor's Armies. There's a bunch of these for each of the people. And they're printed gold instead of black for the Chancellor, which is quite cool. Then we can show the other ones after. Let's bag the Chancellor up. Oh, I really want to play as the Chancellor, but you can't in two players, so we'll have to wait till our friend can come over to play the three player version and start the campaign. But we might have a practice game to see, to remember how it works, you know? I really do like that bag of bags, though. I'm going to put you over here for now. Back to the over there. Then we have the world box, which holds the cards and tokens you'll keep from game to game. Uh, looks like we just go like that. Ooh, I'm not, not going to do that on camera now. I'm going to be scared to mess it up. It seems, it seems pretty easy to some below, and then you just fold over the bottom. That shouldn't be too hard. And here are all the different locations you can go to. Which again, you'll, I'll, I'll set it up at the end so you can see how it looks on the board and how much space and stuff it takes up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <sighs> yes, there we go. And the nice thing about the playmat is it's much easier to like pick up the cards and stuff, especially in a very card-driven game. <sighs> I like that it doesn't cost much extra. Let's see what these locations are. The hidden place. And each has a different effect in the corner, which you can reference. Shrouded wood, the tribunal. And then you can reference back or pause to look at these individually. I'm not gonna go through all of them. Well, you can pause if you wanna look at one in particular. I'm not gonna read all of them. They all look very unique. I like the like blues and greens and stuff. That's the continuous theme. And then, like some are like coast cards where you can like go between them more easily. Oh, open packet B. Oh, these are reference cards for each player. Oh, it tells you what to do. Huh, that's cool. And then here's more cards. They're separated though, so I guess... Huh. Flip over this card to start setting up. Unfurl the map. Hmm. We'll do that right after. Let's put you over there so I can remember to do that. And the rest of the locations will go... In the box where we found them. And then here's the dice for the game. That's a lot of dice. Ooh, these are nice. They don't seem very chippable or anything. Here's um, one of each type of dice. There's one purple one, a bunch of blues, and even more oranges. You use oranges to attack and blues to defend. And it's cool since the more dice you roll, the worse it can be for, or the better it can be for the defender because one defense, two defense, and then this one multiplies everything you have by two. So if you get a bunch of those, it can get really crazy. And then this is the dice you'll roll for the chancellor to determine the winner. I like how it's the same color as the chancellor at the end. No, not to determine the winner, to determine if they win if they're still holding the oath, but the game will end then. So the game could go on significantly longer if the chancellor's rolling bad. Uh, is there a place for these dice? That is the question. Um, in a baggie, that is. Not sure about this insert. I'm not seeing much organization besides some basic stuff, but I'm probably missing most of it. Whee! Then we have five decks of cards. Which I'm not going to go all through, partly because I don't want to spoil myself, and also because it would take a long time. Here are all the relics you can go through. Hmm, these say packet B, flip over this card. Huh. Is this like to help you like setting up the game? Cause that's really cool. I haven't seen a game do something like that before where it like includes cards to help you like figure out how to play or set it up the first time while you're understanding. And this really does not want to open. <laughs> Oof. Ow, I'm gonna cut myself. This is not going great. This is a very rude deck of cards. Be defeated by my knife. Ha! There we go. Finally stabs through it. Now we will rip off his skin to see his insides. That, that was really weird. I don't know why I said that. Boop. 
archive only open only after your first game. Ooh, I will not look at that then. Hmm. It says flip over look at that. Huh. Packet B. I'm not gonna look at that then if it doesn't want me to look at it in packet C. Hmm. Well, I'll put these back. I don't want to spoil myself. Let's put these back in here. And then there. What else are you see here? Uh, there's this. I'm not sure what this is for. Might say in the rules. But other than that, we can start to pack it back up. And then I'll set it up. All of this right here is a huge mess though. If you just have to keep all your things in bags, wonder what goes there. Here we have the packet A. Slot those with the other locations. Down. Uh, then we have the world box. And then each of these, where did they go? They go like. Oh, I think they went on top there. I'm not going to pack this up. I'm going to set it up. So see you back in one second. walkthrough that it provides you at the beginning. So after each game, like the certain cards that people controlled and who had the most influence and who controlled where are going to stay in the game and influence the start of it. But this time, um, it just provides a basic setup for what you should do in the game instead of, um, since you haven't played a game before, to influence it. So here's how it looks set up. There's a few bits and bobs off, but our camera is not big enough to see all of this. It's not really as big as it makes it seem. The board is very long, but it's very easy to see. And each of the different tokens and things for the people isn't that complicated. Um, it doesn't seem that hard, and I'm really excited to start getting playing, which you can see we might review it or play it on our channel soon. Thanks for stopping by.